That's right, that she is pregnant, and she will be the mother of Jesus. That is exactly right. So, Leonardo is not the only artist to ever paint this event, this moment, this Annunciation, to announce to Mary that she is going to be the mother of the Christ. But this is Leonardo's, and what is unique about Leonardo's is, it is the first time that an angel is depicted with uh, more correct bird wings, okay? Now, the, you know, I told you how much that he loved birds and the study of flight and the wings and stuff, so it was very important to him that the bird wings be correct, and he knew that they wouldn't be tiny little wings, so he had them larger, actually, more appropriate. I mean, if a wing is going to lift a human up, it would be larger, it wouldn't be these little dingly cupid-type wings, okay? That wouldn't work, actually. You know, I mean, physically, that's, that can't happen. And so he actually did paint them larger. And the church, they, the church officials, when they saw this, they had great specifics about how you could depict people in art. And you could not depict angels that way, and so they made him change them. And he did to a certain degree, but they still are the more closest accurate to bird wings than anybody had done before. Very closely related to correct bird wings. They still have two balls. Yeah, but that's because he had to change it. <laughs> the, the part where it's connected to the back, like not the wings, but the part where it's connected to the back, almost looks a little... Yeah. 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 What page is it? Um, in the picture part? Is anyone in here? Yeah, it's on the... Uh, page 8 is the picture part. Hey, Jared, if you didn't get that, it's on page 8 of your picture packet. And it's on the second to last page of the so. Okay. Now we'll move along here mm -hmm. to the version of the rock. 
and this one is in the Louvre. This one is the first of two paintings that he did called The Virgin of the Rock. There are lights, this crazy rocky background. You're going to see it in a lot of his paintings, several of his paintings. We only have 50 of his works left today. Well, that's dumb. Well, it's sad. Yeah, that's you. It is sad. Okay, and you know, obviously this painting has been the source of much speculation. Uh, it is written about in the Da Vinci Code and in other stories because of the angel distractingly pointing um, at John. And what you're pointing at, what's the point of this? Okay. Um, I can read a little bit about it for you here. Uh, this painting has an extraordinary freshness and beauty, even though it conforms to many of the conventions of the time of Leonardo's early career. The dimpled skin of the infant Christ's arm, the finely drawn <coughs> hands, the perfect beauty of the angel's face, the sweetness of the virgin's expression are a magical blending of the natural and the ideal. The imagery of the painting has provoked much thought. The two hands directly above the infant Christ's head serve to isolate him within the painting. He blesses St. John, who represents the human race. He, in turn, kneels in worship and is shielded by the virgin's cloak and embracing arms. The angel looks out, to the, out of the painting, but we do not know at whom or what. And most confusingly of all points, at St. John in a most distracting manner. Why Leonardo draws the eye so strongly towards St. John remains a mystery. And of course, you know, this this is the fodder for great, you know, make it up, right? Let's <laughs> just make it up because we don't know the answer. But people who write great stories, you know, like, uh, I believe it's Dan Brown, right, wrote the Vinci Code. I mean, he can, you know, come up with some great stuff. And he's not the only one who has used this painting as a basis or part of story, but, you know, obviously when you get something like this, you can just make it up, right? Because Leo didn't, Leonardo didn't leave us uh, notes on why he did what he did. We don't actually know. We do know, because he's painted St. John through different times of his life, that he evidently had an affinity for John. Um, he paints him a lot, so we know that he uh, appreciated him as one of the uh, special people in uh, the life of Christ. So we don't understand it completely. There's no way to. And until they stumble across some sort of notations that he's left, it's all up for guessing, right? Your best guess. But there's two versions of this. Now, this is Jesus down here, and he's holding his finger. He's blessing. This is what he's doing. Okay. Baby Jesus. He's blessing. And then you have John here. Uh, and. This is an angel sitting over here by Jesus, and then Mary in the middle. Why doesn't she have wings? She just doesn't. I don't know why. But she'll yeah, also she does. She does? Yeah, look. It's right behind her. They're kind of dark. I don't see it. It's dark. It's because I can't see. Is it a dark thing? Don't. Yeah, it's right there. Right there? Yeah. Okay. I don't care. Oh. <laughs> I can't tell. It's so dark. But you have this crazy dark background, and look, the light coming through, the rockiness there that's going on, this fantastic, you know, myth, mystical background going on. And um, nobody has paid, that I see here, I can't see that, is it the next one that has paid? Yes. Oh, a little bit of hay. Oh, now you can really see her. Right. That's way Now you can see her wings, yes. This is the, the later version, which was done, um, this one was done in about 1478. The old one was done, uh, sorry, at about 1478. This one was done in about 1506. Okay, so it's 20 something years later. The angel's not playing anymore. Right. We're not, no longer pointing. No, no longer the distracting pointing that we had before. And this one is in the National Gallery in London. We'll go back down and compare again. 
I hope there's one more. There's one in the Louvre. Well, and why he would paint the same exact thing twice? Also, no answer. Maybe he didn't like the brush there. Again, 20 years come between them, and you can see that his style and things have changed. I think he just wanted to show how he's improved throughout his time. Maybe he, so there was something like he was just not okay with on the other one. Yeah. Could be. Maybe he just wanted to paint his Or maybe, maybe he just wanted it was the trick frustrating him to make a better look. Maybe. That's we don't know. We don't know. I mean, it's all pure guess. Just what we're doing now. <laughs> how come we, the angel doesn't have a halo? We don't know. I don't know that either. That's and it's like one of those games. <laughs> so because she actually is divine, so she doesn't need, I don't know, I'll just make that up. What does a halo represent? Like Divinity. Oh. I just don't like how white they are in this one, you know? Like in the other one, it was more realistic, so they're more peaky. Flesh, flesh tones. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just kind of like a bright light is on them. Yeah. Okay. This one is called Lady with Ermine. The Zartorsky. It is. It is this my lady partner in here. She's in Krakow, Poland. The lady here is thought to be a portrait of Cecilia Galrani, who became uh, Duke Lodovico's mistress hmm. in 1481. She was probably painted shortly afterwards. The ermine was one of Lodovico's emblems of his family. And there is also a possible play on the lady's name, which uh, the Greek word for ermine Cecilia Gallerino wrote of her portraits by Leonardo to Isabel of the S. So evidence of its authenticity is strong. Parts of this picture have been damaged and there are signs of repainting. However, the modeling of the lady's uh, face, particularly the eyes and nose, has an unmistakable mastery uh, touch of Leonardo. The ermine is surely pure Leonardo, a living, breathing, muscular, silky, lively creature that only a consummate artist with passionate love and knowledge of nature could depict. And it's also a little bit funny because the ermine stands for purity. <laughs> and she's a mistress. What exactly. is across her forehead? Like, it's not the darker lines, but... It's a veil? Like a brow? It's a, no, it's a veil. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's the stem of a, a veil. And then you have a band. Oh. No. It really does look like a <laughs> It's not a humor. <laughs> Tiny little bell, little bitty detail set. Oh, yeah. And that's one of the reasons uh, that I love this, is because of uh, her mind, and she's a mistress, so it's kind of like, this is an intelligent man's way to play a joke, right? <laughs> For all the world to see. So her mind just like a giant rat. Now it's like a ferret. It's a cousin to a ferret. Do they stink like ferrets? I don't know. Yeah. Actually, I would imagine. I've never, never seen an ermine. I mean, there's a European cousin to uh, our ferrets, but I would imagine that they do. They Hey, but you want us to reprint the 
Yeah, if you do reprint them out in color, Garrett, uh, and make flashcards in color, you can get bonus points. So Is there, do you have these on the share drive so it can go for a lot of color? Not for you, this is your homework. I mean, I'm not going to give you bonuses just to do my work. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> They're really easy. Okay. <laughs> Alright, um, so Mature Need Man, um, these are the divine proportions of man. What does the word divine mean? Not angelic. I know this, but I More than angelic. Mm -hmm. Divine is. Perfect. Godly? God. Oh, yes. Okay, that's our God. Yes, so, so yeah. Perfect God, divine. Yes. So these would be the divine portions of man. So this would <coughs> probably be the proportions of Jesus, if we argued it that way. Right? Okay, so in this drawing, these are the proportions of man. Uh, there is a famous passage by the Roman architect named Vitruvius. That's why it's called the Vitruvian Man, because it's based on the idea of a Roman architect named Vitruvius, in which Vitruvius describes how the human form, lying face upwards with his hands and feet extended, can be circumscribed, not circumcised, okay, <laughs> circumscribed, mathematical term, with the navel, belly button, okay, as the center of the circle, he, the trivius, further suggested that the figure can also be enclosed precisely within a square. The head is calculated as being one tenth of the total height of the man, and the uh, Da Vinci went on to do perfect proportions mathematically, which I have written down here. Hold on. And I'm on the wrong page, so give me just <laughs> Here we go. Okay. The lip is one twelfth in proportion to the face, um, and one and a hundred and twelve in proportion to the body. You can break everything down. It's all perfect to my proportion. And of course based on what the jury has said. That's why it's inside a circle, inside a square. Divine proportion. It's really in there. We've got a little scale down here. And you see this on uh, medical books and science books, on science books, you know, you see it on the covers of uh, things in science because obviously it has to do with scientific things, anatomy, things like that. People uh, will publish their textbooks and usually you'll, you'll see the Vitruvian Man on the covers of a lot of things like that. Yeah, that's why I was like, I was like, I've seen this somewhere. Mm-hmm. He's in our world. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think of it, I think of, like, Allah, or what, is that the one that is, or Krishna, however it's pronounced. You know, he has, like, the six arms, and he was like... Oh, um... Shiva? Is it Shiva? That's blue? I can't remember. It has, like, he has, like, multiple different names. God. I forget those. That's how I can remember all those. Yeah. Anyway, so that's the divine proportions. This is what, uh, you know, people think Jesus would have had proportions like this. On League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, yes. is that what that guy was worshiping? What he just said? Yeah. No, he was worshiping the God of Death. <coughs> um, I don't Jesus. remember this. He's Hindu, and he did have multiple arms, so it could be the same one, I guess. But I thought that one got, that God started with an S. Like Shiva? Shiva. Uh, no, I don't think it's Shiva. I think it's... Uh, I can't remember. Oh, well, no. Okay. All right. A little teasing. And moving along now to the Red Shock sketch, which is the only authentic likeness of Da Vinci that we have, and he did this himself. So that's supposed to be him, like a portrait? Yes. Oh, I didn't write down stuff because I just wrote it stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I still have a little bit of a We're almost done. Oh no, it's but you know, and he also did scuba gear and all kinds of things. I never thought about that. That was one of my favorite things that he drew drawings for was the scuba gear. Well, I didn't 
Uh, in this drawing here, he actually chose to show himself as a person that's Yeah, the figure of wisdom, basically, an authority of great age, although, in fact, he would have been in his early 60s, so it's probably not quite as aged as he does look here. Uh, he's very private now in his life. He reveals less of himself than we might wish. There is a sense of his humanity and keen intelligence here, but the drawing has an almost archetypal feel to it, so that he could be virtually any man in the old age, not particularly Leonardo. But again, it was not done for some great work of art. He just sketched himself one day. And it's the only one that we have that survived that was probably done while he was alive. His mouth looks so sad. Except, obviously, Raphael. You can very clearly see that this is the same figure I showed you from the School of Athens. Not to have met him. What would you say to him? If you could ask him one question, and only one question, what would you ask him? Teach me to paint. Uh, what is Mona's secret? Yeah, what's, what is behind Mona's I want to hear it from him. I want to hear everybody's theories. I want to know. Right, I want to hear from him. him. What do you mean, what is Mona's secret? Because she's like the only one, like, I don't know. They say that she's the one that's so bad at that way. Oh, okay. I read a book called Book Club, Honestly, and, my book, and it's about Mona. the girl that supposedly posed oh. for the Mona picture. Uh -huh. Elizabeth something or other. Elizabeth says something. And I'm just like, I want to know, is it really her? Uh -huh. If she really has this secret, if she really... Because in the book it says she sat for this man who loves her, but that she could never marry because he's part of the rich family that's no longer in charge of stuff. Yeah.
You're still in this class with me and you never talk. Never do you talk. I know. Why not? I've been in this class all year. Why don't you talk? I don't know. <laughs> she's so meek and wild. You just say she's meek? going all together.
Some uh, people might look at it and uh, they can't remember the exact name of it, but they recognize it. They do know it. And they might not know who painted it and they might not even know what museum it is. But there are people all over the world who actually recognize this painting. They do know it. It is the most famous painting in all of the world. One reason simply is, is because it is Da Vinci. Okay? Simply put, uh, that is one of the, just, there it is. It's Leonardo Da Vinci. Um, this, to me, is not his masterpiece. We have yet to learn about his masterpiece. But it is one of the most, it is the most famous painting in the world. And it is one of his masterpieces, but not the uber masterpiece. I'll show, we have yet to go to that one. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> the uber masterpiece is yet to come. But let's talk about Mona. How come, you know, there's such mystery that surrounds her and all this wonderful stuff? Well, first of all, you know, let's just learn some things about it. Uh, it is called La Giaconda. Her name was Lisa de Antonio Maria Garondi. She was the wife of a wealthy Florentine merchant who commissioned me to paint her. Uh, they had just gotten married, hadn't been married very long when he paid for Da Vinci to come and paint his wife. And they never took the painting. They never owned it. Da Vinci kept the painting his whole life. It was with him when he died. It was actually with him in his possession. Uh, there are a lot of reasons why nobody knows the answer to it. Okay. We do know that he was paid by them to paint her. We understand that. There's records of that. There was a lot of talk for a long time about who she actually was and a lot of mystery behind that. Okay, But the truth is, it is the lady that I'm telling you it is. They, in more recent years, found documents in the basement of the Louvre, which, for God's sake, if I could ever go anywhere, let me loose in the basement of the Louvre. Because <laughs> that's where the real treasures are, actually. Not up where you can see all the stuff. It's down there where they don't even remember what they have. And it actually was a document that you know, uh, Da Vinci had written notations on and was commissioned by La Giaconda's husband her husband paying Da Vinci to paint her. So we do know for sure it definitely is Lisa G. Uh, Lisa, well, that's what her name before she got married, Gironde. Lisa Giaconda. That's who she is. No mystery about that. Not anybody else. It is her. We lost that document for a long time. So then you have all the speculation about who she is, blah, blah, blah. And you get all these other stories. You even have one story I've heard before when I was in college <coughs> that it is a female version of Da Vinci. How many of you have heard that one before? I've heard that one. Okay, I've heard several that. of you have. Okay, that's cute. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's not a female version of Da Vinci. My God, people just make crap up, don't they? I love that. I do have a question. <laughs> I've heard that Da Vinci was homosexual. Is that true? Well, I wasn't there. No, you're asking stuff that is can't there any proof proving it? There's no picture. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I meant. I meant, is, it, is there proof for or against that, like, written anywhere? No, there's nothing written had anywhere. Had that was my question. Well, all people yeah. like this have apprentices and people who stay with them. I mean, Da Vinci, Michelangelo, all of these great artists have people who are with them that are of the same <laughs> sex. It doesn't mean they were all homosexuals. I mean, they're all working with them, and, you know, they're, they're, like, a master like this has someone who's doing all kinds of things for and with him. And he did have a man that was with him for many, many years. And that's where all of the rumors come from, is this one particular man who was with him. If that's true or not, I mean, you have to give all that stuff a grain of salt. You weren't there. There's no evidence, real hardcore evidence, of an intimate relationship between these two. Obviously, they had to be very close to tolerate each other for those many years and to work as closely as they did, but um, being close with your, your bro and having sex with him is two totally different things, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> I mean, you're talking about two completely <laughs> different relationships there. Now, no, Da Vinci did not marry, but I did talk with you about that before. Neither did Michelangelo, neither did Raphael. Most artists don't because they don't have time for <laughs> a family. And what woman wants to put up with them? My God, these are, their personalities are just ridiculous. They're super you know? Yeah, 
through body complex. Yeah, I mean, that, yes, they have this God complex. I mean, you, you're dealing with some personality issues there that are, wow. <laughs> now, you know, uh, Albert Durer did get married, but that was not a successful marriage. They didn't spend very many years even with each other. Most of the marriage they, were, they spent apart. So do you call that successful? I don't call that successful. Uh, most of these people that we've talked about didn't have don't successful you? marriages or marriages, period. So was he? I don't know. I wasn't there. I'm, I'm going to give that story a grain of salt. You know, uh, if I had more proof and could tell you, then I would say yes. But I don't really have, I've not seen myself or read definite proof of that. Okay. I understand where the talk comes from, but I am not one of these people who have bought into that story. Okay. Right. And I have now. Back to uh, Mona here, though. Let's start talking about. She painted on a piece of wood, actually. Wood? Yeah, oh. not canvas, but wood. And she's not much bigger than the Mona that I have in the room. A little bit, okay, but not much. Um, in the last several years, when they re uh, re they re uh, modeled her room that she's in at the Louvre. The remodeling of just that wing where she's at was $15 million. The Japanese pitched in $5 million themselves because they love Mona. So the Japanese country, they just gave us, gave the Louvre, they gave them $5 million, but so here you go. And then the Louvre had the $10 million that they raised in other places, but the Japanese gave them 5 And the room is fantastic. Now, I saw it both ways. I saw it before renovation and after renovation, and let me tell you, it's so much better because before renovation, she was just on the wall. Just you have this long hall, long room that you go into, and you know you just have paintings all along the wall. Well, she was just on the wall, but they had built a bulletproof case around her, so it was like this box that stuck out from the wall. It was just kind of ridiculous, basically. And so you had to walk around this bulletproof case, which was dark. There was no lighting on the inside of the case, and it had a roof on it. So it was just, it was bad. It was not the best way to view her before. And there's always a million people that are seeing Mona. So get ready that you're going to stand in line and be bumper to bumper with people if you go to see Mona. Uh, that's just the way it is. Particularly if you go in the summer, because everybody in the world is on vacation, and they're all there. And you need to go drink. <laughs> yeah, it's bad. It really would be bad, yeah. Uh, How did and you feel when you first saw Mona? When I first saw her. I was, the, I mean, the only word that can describe it is wow. That's really the only word. You know, just wow. That, there she is, you know. That's the next thing that kind of see is there she is, you know. And I've looked at Mona a lot. Uh, I think me and Mona have this thing, you know. She knows me, I know her. And uh, we kind of have a connection, Mona and I. You talk to Mona? Why? I do. We have, a, we have a thing going on between me and her. Why is she yeah. called the Mona Lisa when it's painted after Lisa? Yeah, where's Mona come from? Mona is like uh, Mrs. Okay. Uh, a term for like Mrs. Okay, but today now, the way that they did this room, they remodeled that whole wing, as I was telling you about, and what they did was they put a petition wall in the center of the room where you could just walk straight through the room. Now you can't. There's a petition wall right there. You can walk to the left and the right of the petition wall, but Mona's on the petition wall. Okay? And there's a little, uh, there's a rope in front of her. She can't actually get close to her and touch her. But there's a rope thing, and she's flanked with guards. Does she have bulletproof glasses? Yes, she does. She's uh, got bulletproof glass, but it's flat with the wall. So you don't have this crazy box sticking out. And the lighting <coughs> is so much better now. You have this natural lighting from above, which is also filtered, because they had to pay millions of dollars for filtered natural lighting to come through. Because you don't want to damage the painting, so you have to be careful about the ultraviolet rays and stuff. They don't allow photography in the Great Hall, which is where she's at. So when you want a picture of her, which yes, I do have pictures, you have to be very patient and wait for the guards to get out of the way <laughs> and ching and run. Okay, so because if they get you with cameras, you get in trouble. And if you have flash photography, they might beat you, so you have to be careful about that. Please tell me you did not have flash. I did the first time, oh. and that was, and I do have that picture to prove that. Um, 
my camera's flash would not go off, and I just ran out of the room, you know, bad situation. But, you know, the Japanese, if y'all want to find, first of all, if you want to find Japanese, I can show you where they're all. They're all standing in front of Mona. Uh, so look at the Japanese when you're in Paris. Go and find Mona, because there they are. Um, they not only all congregate in front of Mona, but they have the biggest damn cameras I've ever seen. I didn't even know they made cameras like this, okay? But they are Japanese, so who, who, what, what did the Japanese make? Technology. I mean, yeah, they make the great technology, <laughs> so they got the freaking cameras. I'm not kidding you, they have lenses that are this big around. I mean, it looks like a, a gun, like they're going to shoot her, you know? I mean, I don't know what they're going to do. They're going to blow her head off or something, but they got these lenses of, I don't know what they're trying to do, see your soul? I don't know what's happening here, but... You know, and they're not even supposed to have a camera in the room, which they did the first time. You know, the guards weren't very as diligent the first time as they are now that they've done their $50 million renovation. They're very diligent now. And so they've got this, uh, you just can't have cameras like that. But I'll never forget looking at those Japanese cameras going, my God, no wonder y'all were on phone for a while. You know, just drop some of those suckers. Um... <laughs> Anyway, uh, oh, my so, <laughs> uh, it was pretty awesome, though. Anyway, so I got some pictures of her the second time, much better lighting. She's beautiful. She's wonderful. And everybody wants to see Mona. But wood, painting on wood. So when we did the renovation, we had to take her down. Okay, she does have to be cleaned every now and then. And that's why she doesn't have eyebrows today. Because some jackass in about the 1700s, who was cleaning her, stripped her eyebrows, stripped her eyebrows off. Oh my god, what an idiot. Stripped him around off. Yeah, really. Okay, okay. I've yeah. never noticed she didn't have eyes. There you go. There you go. See? No eyes. Right? Now, idiot. that eyebrows and eyelashes, those kinds of finishing touches are things that you paint after the flesh is dry, right? right. You don't paint them first and put flesh on over it. Right? You paint them last. So it's the last thing on the painting that's dry. So when you're renovating and cleaning it, if you're using the wrong kind of sol solvents or whatever, it, those are the first things stripped off. So gone are the eyebrows. Jack Thank God that he stopped, right? Whoever it was. Hey, I, I just want y'all to think about this for a minute. Just hold on, okay? Just, just think about this for a second. Mason, what if you're the cleaning guy? And all of a sudden you're just like, ah! <laughs> I mean... <laughs> She will never go through this ever again. They're done. MRIs, infrared, x-rays, you name the machinery. Well, we can see the moon, you suckers, okay? So we we look through her stuff, okay? We know what the moon is. They use those Japanese cameras. Right? They got the Japanese cameras. They had gun this, okay? And we know that Mona is warping right here over her left shoulder in this area here. She's 
the wood is more warping right there. What okay. happens when wood warps? Well, you have to be careful because, you know, it's wood, so you don't want it to do any more of this warping. So when they put her back it, in the room where she, it's kind of like its own little inside room, although it's a wall, it's under total climate control. So we don't want it to warp anymore, okay? So we've got control of this warping issue here. And uh, we also did a couple other things. You know, there's one thing about Da Vinci that is really, really special, and that is <coughs> his ability to paint without visible brush strokes. We can't see visible brush strokes, okay? So we're thinking, all right, we're going to put this, we're going to scope in there and look at his brush strokes, you know, because no painting can withstand microscopic, right? Absolutely. Except Mona Lisa. There are no brush strokes visible even to our most powerful microscope. Now, I'm going to tell you all something right now. If that doesn't blow your mind, it really should, because there isn't anybody on the planet alive today who has an explanation for that, except for the fact that he had a pact with Satan. <laughs> okay. so short of that, no one on the planet He's knows so what the hell is up with why can't you see brush strokes? Even on the most powerful microscopes, you should be able to, everybody can see your brush stroke under a microscope. Even if you paint with your fingers? You just threw a whole bunch of paint on there. His finger painted! Oh my god! god. <laughs> that is what's up! <laughs> but <laughs> finger painting works. <laughs> We practiced for a long time. There was ABCs. You know who's sitting there thinking, are these people serious? Do they really think that I think you're painted that? Well, yeah, yeah. Well, no brush strokes. There's nothing. They have no idea. He's looking up from us right now going, they're idiots. Now tell me. Sold my soul. History, people who have studied art throughout history, who have been in the game, they know that they have no idea. 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 They have no they don't, this is an absolute mystery. There's no way for them, they can't explain it. Did they test away. this against the well, paint? Time so. traveling. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. They have checked it against the finger painting. They have to know the only, the only, the only yeah. explanation is it's not brush strokes. There's well, nothing. Maybe. There's nothing. Maybe you just got it. Maybe you had a finger. I'm not sure that they thought of that. I'm not sure that they thought of that. I will send an email and and let them know. Uh, did you think of the tongue <laughs> as an instrument? Of course, tell us what I know. Tell us what I know. Could be. Could be. Y'all tell you what you should do. Y'all just submit to me your ideas and I'll email them to the Louvre. And, uh, we'll there is a YouTube yeah. in there. Yeah. No wonder we don't like it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly what they'll say. It's <laughs> like, how big is here that, that she has a shawl, she has red curly hair, which is difficult to tell. She wears a veil, okay? She's wearing this shawl here that's wrapped around her arm here. The, there's intricate looping here on her green dress that she wears. <coughs> we got a robe that goes nowhere because of the convention it doesn't need to. Uh, we have a Roman aqueduct for no particular reason. Why not? She sets in a... Um, balcony? No, no balcony. A um, stool? Porticles. Yeah, something like that. Portico. What's that thing called? That some porch. We put them out in our yards now, and they're round and oh, got a roof. Oh, 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 type thing. Yeah, that's what she's setting in. That's where she's setting. You can see the columns here, but the wood has actually been cut down. There's a column here on this side, and a column here on this side. There was on that side. It's been cut off now for some reason. Okay. Now, here's the deal. Let's get it closer here. Oh. Uh, this is what the <coughs> colors would have looked like before it, it's been, um, yeah, it's aged now because he put a layer of lacquer on top of it, so that lacquer has cracked and aged, and we don't see the true colors that are underneath it today. But th if we could strip them off, this is, if we could pull this off, that's what it would look like. And you see now, we can see so much more details here. And there is oh, a man. Red now. Yeah. I think it, I think it looks better. Yeah. There is a man who was part of the restoration, and he was there when they were doing all this stuff. He was in on that, and uh, he traveled around the world with uh, this and a bunch of other shots, trying to show everybody what Mo it was called Mona Reveal. That was he went to a bunch of different museums all around the world, and he used to get, get just a couple of shots. This is one of the ones I could get on the web, 
but he wanted you to pay, obviously, to go to his exhibit, so you couldn't see everything that he put together, but he was a part of that uh, process when they did the renovation in her room and they cleaned her, so he knows all about her. He wasn't just making this up. It was not just a wild guess. These are the colors as they broke off edges and stuff, you know, as close as we possibly know, this is what Lauren would have looked like when you first painted them. That's the closest I can get you. I like that tidy up. <laughs> Why? Well, her dress? Would you, this is well, never mind. Why did he paint her on wood? Did he paint anything else ever on wood? Uh, I don't know, maybe. But, I mean, this for, for us, it's not the best because wood works. <laughs> if it had been canvas, it would have been better. Um, and to put that layer of lacquer on top was also bad. But Da Vinci had a theory that people painted um, in sort of a, it's called Suffamato. In art, it's called Suffamato. It's sort of a, uh, not a real bright light, but kind of a shadowy. Uh, yeah, not exactly that we can see really, really well. He liked that better because <coughs> he felt like it added mystery to the character. That if you could see their features really, really well, <coughs> That, if, you know, who wants a bright light in your face? He didn't really like that. He kind of liked some mystery to the character. So that's part of the reason why you don't see everything as, you know, <coughs> perfectly as you would have been able to see. It looks kind of blurry. Yeah, it's a little bit of a blurriness and like this smoke or something. You know, it never gives you, you know, stuff motto is what they call it in art. Um, and let's get some more. That's this close. And there's her face. Oh, you can see all gentle smile that she has in her eyes, even without the brows, are so mysterious. Part of that is uh, because Da Vinci seems to have captured <coughs> Mona in a, in a moment that lasts on your face, an expression that lasts on your face for literally a millisecond. And that is the expression that you make just as you're bursting into a larger smile. That is only on your face for a millisecond because you're moving, okay? And it's so when you look at Mona, it's this move, you know, you feel like that she's moving and she's going. If you look at her long enough, you'll see your teeth in this. Yeah. But I've watched her for years now and I've never seen her teeth. So I keep watching, hoping one day I will. You do in the movies from what is it, uh, Ben Stiller, right? Yeah, she's I, I don't know. I think maybe it is that movie with him. But another reason that you feel that way is the eyes, yes. We go minus their eyebrows. The mouth, there's a magical mouth. I, I can see the eyebrows there now. Like okay. Mad. We, and you just feel like that, you know, she's just about to smile. And those eyes, just look at those eyes. Okay, one thing about the eyes is that you feel like they're watching you, no matter where you're at. So over here, do you guys feel like she's looking at you? Do you feel like she's looking at you? Yeah. Hey, do you feel like she's looking at you? Now, that's a huge difference between you two. <laughs> I'm going to say she can't be looking at both of you unless she's cross-eyed. <laughs> or what would that be? The lazy eye? Lazy eye. Okay. That's like blocked eye or something. Okay. So watch this, all right? I want you to get up and move around the room and watch her as you're doing it because she'll follow you. Oh, that's like that picture of the guy holding the gun at hospital, but it looks like the gun's going to be you. Illusion that Da Vinci put in the painting. Wait. Um, why are optical 
Okay. Oh. It's an optical illusion. You don't have control over what's happening to your eyes right now. Now, sometimes I've I've known this for so long, but sometimes I I look at her, I'll get a little bit of a headache, not very much, but a little bit of a headache because of what it does to your eyes. Your eyes are, are moving right now inside, and you can't control that because there's no, a fight going on. No. Your left and your right eye are doing this. Yeah, because okay. when you try to stare people in the eye, you can't look at one eye. Just look up in the both. Your left and your right eye are both doing this, and you, there's nothing you can do to stop it. It's, it's subconscious. Except close you might not be able to feel it even. Yeah, except close your eyes. <laughs> you might not be able to feel it even, but I'm so in tune with it now that I do feel it. After a while, I'll be like, oh, it's making me sick, and I have to stop. And that is because the backgrounds over my shoulders do not match up. Oh, I see it now. The left side is bigger. Well, her left. Okay. Right you side. will notice. Yeah, yeah, the right side up. One side is from a bird's eye view, and one side is from a straight on view. Oh, that's right. Now, your brain knows there's something wrong, and it's trying to compensate. It's trying to make it match up. Okay. You can't stop that. You have no control over that. Your brain is doing something it's supposed to do. Now, here's the gig. Okay, look, watch. Back here, these places don't match up. Your eyes are trying to make them match up. The place where these places would come together if they were going to is right here. Right at her mouth. Right there. So it's like a little spark. That's what happens. You have a little spark. It's almost like a movement. That's why you feel like her mouth is going to move. You're like pain one time. Okay. Oh, and that's happening inside <laughs> your brain. It's a trick on the most intelligent man on the planet. It was not a mess up. He never did mess up. He just didn't mess up. No, no, no. How did you do it? Yeah. You weren't there. An obstacle. This is a grain of salt, Miss Hanks. By the smartest man on the planet. Okay. That is the dick. I watched this documentary that was all about obstacle illusions <laughs> and like Greek and Roman architecture. Yep. It is so cool. Can I get her eyebrows in? No, not yet. Now, uh, <laughs> let's see. Okay, let me go back for just a second. Because I got a strip off. What else? Did you say you got a strip off? No, I got the strip off the and that white off it. Her lips just look so. Flesh like, I guess. Yeah, that's what Da Vinci was praised for that he painted flesh. You, you see the difference in the way he paints and the way many looks, other artists. That looks yellow. That's like amazing how it does not look anything at all like wood until you get really close. That's just the veneer crack itself. Okay, so this is all the veneer crack. Okay. okay. Now, I am going to go ahead and stop there for the day because. I forgot to turn the recorder off when we went to lunch, so I have a problem, and I don't know how to fix it, so I'm going to go ahead and stop right now and try to fix it. Now, can we draw eyebrows? Can we do eyebrows now? Yeah, you can. Okay. A dipstick. Wait, 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 wait just a minute. Let me, let me do this. Hold on. Let me, I have to turn it off first. Actually, oh, hold on. I'm sure Jared would like, Jared would like to see that. You're not going to be able to do that when I turn this off, because you won't come touch the board.